I know that some of you have been waiting for this for a long time and I appreciate you patiently waiting. So let's now talk about the DxO Photo Suite and how it performs on the M1 Pro and M1 Max. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. And as always with these benchmark videos, we're going to start with the test and reference system. For this, I have used six different machines to run this test on, including four additional machines, two of them which are Intel, which I own, and also the M1 processor. This is the non-pro version to kind of get to see a spread and how these programs perform in general. And for this test, we'll be looking at two software from DXL. One of them is Photolab, the other one is Pure Raw. And the way how these programs function and perform in general are going to be different from each other and drastically different in a way from many of the other photo apps that I've seen too. As far as optimization go, just looking at these programs in general, I don't think it's necessarily fully optimized for the M1 Pro M1 Max as yet, although it does perform much better than the computer that comes before it. So it's one of those things that they can really go in and improve the performance, but it depends on how much more performance gain they can really increase from optimizing. If it's not that much, maybe it's really not worth the developer time to really go in and squeeze that extra 10% compared to like the extra exponential amount of man hours they have to put into enhance these software and optimize it. So that's just some of my thoughts on there, but let's start out with Photolab. So when we take a look at DxO Photolab, one of the things I can tell you right now is that it doesn't use a GPU at all. It uses the memory a little bit on the system, but most of the things what you're gonna see right now is that it goes in and utilize the CPU core extremely heavily in the system. And you can see that all of them including the two high efficiency core at the very beginning are maxed out. So I find this extremely interesting. And initially when I ran this test, I was a little bit more ambitious. So I gave it a lot more files to work on. Ultimately, what I had to do was really cut down the amount of files to that I'm really testing because number one, there is really no performance throttling on these M1 Pro M1 Max processor when it's running on duration. Um, you can watch many of my other videos and it shows exactly the same thing. But the other thing too is that this program takes a long time to really export the file and I really need to figure out a way that will work best and I will share that with you in just a second. But the other thing that we're also going to notice in this program in general is that it uses quite a bit of memory but at no point in time on this 32 gigabyte model that is swab and also I've been finding a similar behavior on the 16 gigabyte model too that it doesn't really go in and do the swap that much meaning that it's kind of just capping the actual RAM usage in general at like around like 50% of like the total or so, which, you know, is one of those things that I find interesting. And the memory pressure throughout the entire process in general doesn't peak beyond 25%. So if you're running this program and you want to get a 16 gigabyte memory version of these laptops, you can probably do it. But if you run multiple apps, including this one, you may want to get 32 just so that your system has a little bit more of like the headroom. All right, let's have a look at the result. This is JPEG export. And for this, I'm using just the 100 Nikon D850 file compared to the 1000 I use in the other program because on this test, you can see right now the time spread between all of them. And what I find interesting here is that between the 14 and 16 inch one, the 14 inch M1 Pro, the base model is the longest because it has two less CPU core. That means we're now seeing the performance spread. And between all the other ones in general, the 14 and also the 16 M1 Pro M1 Max, the performance is just pretty much about the same. The memory in this regard, 64, 32, and also 16 does not make any difference whatsoever. I mean, the 16 takes like a few, like what, 30 seconds longer or something like that. I don't think it's anything to really be concerned about or 20 seconds longer for that matter. And here's the result when we add in the two Intel machine and the two M1. Mac Pro sits at the very top, but is only beating out the inner machine by about 12 seconds. Mind you that this Mac Pro costs around five to six times as much as this machine that is sitting right below. So it's nudging it right there already. And this Mac Pro has a 12 core Xenon processor. So if you're talking about a Mac Pro that has eight cores or something like that, it's definitely not going to beat out these M1 Pro and M1 Max Soci. The other thing that's interesting is that all the inner machines, for example, the 16 inch MacBook Pro falls in almost at the bottom with the Mac Mini just trailing behind and the MacBook Air taking the longest amount of time. And the reason why MacBook Air is taking that much longer is because there is no fan to dissipate the heat on that machine. And it also has two less cores. It only has eight cores total. 
And once those cores get hot, because there's no fan, it's only passive heat dissipation through the chassis and the body in general. So that makes it very difficult for the SOCI to cool down. So if you are doing any type of pro workflow whatsoever and you're looking to get just like the M1, I would recommend getting either the Mac Mini or the MacBook Pro 13 inch because both of these computers has a fan inside them and it will definitely be able to cool down and manage the thermo on the SOCI much better. So that's a few thoughts on that one. And let's take a look at the DNG export time. What we have expected from earlier, it's pretty much the same. Again, the amount of RAM doesn't really increase or decrease the spread by that much. What we're really seeing right now too is that the base model with two less CPU core is taking a slight bit longer, but not that much longer compared to the rest. I mean, it's really like a minute and a half or something like that. So I wouldn't worry about this too much. Here it is when we start to add in the two Intel machines and also the M1 Mac Pro falling right in the middle there. MacBook Pro 16 inch from 2019 with eight core upgraded CPU. It's falling pretty much last. Mac Mini and MacBook Air at the very last as you're seeing right now. So, all right. A few of my followers on the channel have also commented about DXL Photo Lab because they use the program. I'm not really using the program quite as much in my daily workflow as they have. So I appreciate you, you know, chatting with me, giving me some thoughts about how I should run these tests and everything. You guys know who you are. Thank you so much for those feedback. I mean, I always appreciate them. All right. What I also found out from the conversation is that when I use DXL Photo Lab, there is an option to use deep learning and deep learning really pushes the CPU extremely hard in the system. And I have found out, so I only ran this test on a few of the machines. For example, I ran it on the 16 inch M1 Max, the Mac Pro, and also the 16 inch M1 Pro processor with 16 gigabytes of memory. And we can see that when it comes to this, the amount of memory that you're using in the system is starting to play a role a little bit in the timing. I mean, it's not quite as much. We're talking about maybe like four minutes longer between, for instance, the M1 Max and M1 Pro and 64 and 16 gigabytes of memory, but we are starting to see that spread a little bit. So if you're really using these machines for pro tasks, I would probably say just go with 32 gigabytes of memory. You can't go wrong with that one. And if you're gonna use any type of other program from Adobe, like Photoshop or something like that, definitely 32 is going to help out a lot. And you can see my 16 versus 32 gigabytes memory video. I'll leave a link to it in the description and also up here as well so you can check it out and see why you may wanna consider getting 32 gigabytes of memory for your system. Here's the Photolab DNG with deep learning and, and we can see that the Mac Pro for this task is definitely beating out these two other machines. And by the way, it's rare for my Mac Pro fan to run extremely hard, but when I'm running the deep learning test on these machines, I mean, literally, my Mac Pro ramp up so loud that I haven't seen it run that loud before, even for video editing or export or anything like that. It is quite astonishing to see this happen in this way. And the other thing I also want to mention about deep learning as well is that I believe deep learning dips into the ML core on these M1 Pro, M1 Max OC, and also the M1 OC in general. So I haven't done too much tests on here. And as I mentioned before, I don't use these program quite as much, but I wanted to throw this test in there for those of you that are wondering how these machines would perform compared to some of the Intel and also a very limited set of the M1 Pro and M1 Max machine. And next up, we're gonna talk about DXO Pre-Roll, which is the opposite of DXL Photo Lab. So the utilization on this program is definitely quite the opposite. You can see right now that the CPU aren't being used quite as much. There's a lot of peaks and valleys and these two high efficiency core aren't being pushed to the brink like Photo Lab is doing. But what we get though is a higher GPU utilization in Pure Raw. So it's targeting different portion of the program. Memory usage wise is not so much. You can see that it's really doing like that I would say like a comb thing, meaning that it's peaking, going up and down, depending on what it's doing, but it doesn't really push the system too much or really push the system memory pressure quite as much as you're gonna see right now. So the memory pressure is really low and the program in general takes like around 4.2. You can see that this is the way how the memory spread. I mean, it doesn't even go into like the compression or anything like that, which you see in the purple when I was trying to run Photolab earlier. And again, there is no swap in the system. So if you wanna get 16 gigabytes of memory, my recommendation would be that it would be safe to do so. But in general, if you're a photographer and you use these pro apps in general, 
whether it uses anything more than 16 or not, if you're going to multitask or use any type of Adobe product with it, you should probably go in and upgrade to 32 gigabytes of memory. All right, let's have a look at JPEG export from Pure Raw. This is the timing between all of it, and it makes sense that the M1 Max would sit at the very top because it has more GPU core for the program to really go and utilize compared to the M1 Pro. What we're seeing right now is that the 32 GPU, 24 GPU, going down to the 216s and also the 14 GPU, the spread makes a lot of sense. Now, here's the question that you need to think about is that going between, for instance, a 24 to 32 GPU, you're really saving around like two minutes. That's like a $400 difference right there in the SoC price. And if you go, for instance, between the Pro and the Max, that's another $400. Start adding these up, the performance per dollar, you may get the best performance out of these M1 Pro machines compared to the M1 Max, especially if you don't have a lot of use for like the Max beyond just like this program. So I always want us to think about that too, is think about this in perspective of how much more you're really paying because it's very easy for us to really go in and we're at the checkout screen or we're at the configuration screen and say, hey, what's $400 more on a $2,000 machine? That's true, but how much more performance gain are you really getting out of that $400? And that's really something that we need to think about. So here's the export when we add in the Mac Pro and also the MacBook Pro and the M1 computers in general. I'll point them out to you right there. And MacBook Air taking longest. I mean, we kind of expect that to happen. What I'm really amazed here is that the Mac Pro can still take the crown on a few of these tests. But this one utilizes the Radeon GPU on my Mac Pro, which is the Radeon Pro Vega 2 with 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory. It really pushes this GPU hard and it took a while for that GPU to really calm down, meaning that the GPU fan and the whole system fan in general was running really loud and was running loud even much longer after the export task is finished. This is something different between all these other M1 Pros, M1 Max machines that the computer may kick on the fan, but it doesn't really run that loud and it cools down extremely quickly. So that's not what we're getting from the Intel and the Radeon counterpart of it. Here's a DNG export again, because this program utilizes a lot of the GPU, the spread is something what we would expect between all these different machines and also the number of GPU cores in the system. The number of memory doesn't really change much, so that doesn't really bring too big of a deal and if we take a look at this comparing the mac pro 16 inch macbook pro and the two m1s machine you can see the result spread right there so for these particular program from dxo i would say it makes a lot of sense for you to make that jump and get the m1 pro or the m1 max soci instead of just getting m1 because the time improvement between these machines are significant enough that the price increase is definitely going to pay off now, as far as jumping to the higher M1 Pro, M1 Max, so see, or configuring with the higher memory, for instance, that's something that you need to decide based on your total overall workflow and not just, I would say, like this program alone. So my thoughts and recommendation. You already heard about what I have to say. If you need to get away with 16 gigabyte, you can. I would recommend getting 32 because here's one of the analogies that I put into another video. If you're getting the M1 Pro computer with only 16 gigabytes of memory, you're probably better off for the most part, with the exception of running DxO software, getting the M1, either like the M1 MacBook Pro or the M1 Mac Mini and just using that in general, rather than spending the extra money to get the M1 Pro if you're only going to configure it with 16 gigabytes of memory. Now, while we're talking about the DxO software in general, yes, you know, getting these M1 Pro, M1 Max processor does make sense, but I would still encourage you to go in and just upgrade the memory anyway, because if you use Adobe app, you can definitely find uses in these programs. So that's my overall thoughts about these DXO, configuring the SOCI and the RAM in general, and you know, just going by based on the other apps you're using in conjunction with these DXO software. For example, this is like the configuration of the 14 inch model. I still contend that the base 14 inch model upgraded 32 gigabytes memory is one of the best bang for the buck. And I would say that upgrading the base model to 32 gigabytes of memory is better than spending the money for you to upgrade, for instance, the computer to the M1 Pro with 10 CPU, 16 GPU version, and then leaving this at 16 gigabytes of memory. I feel that what I'm showing on the screen right now makes a lot more sense for pros in general. So that's just my recommendation. It, 
It's the machine that impressed me the most and I shared this in multiple videos already. Anyway, I hope that you find the test result from DxO, Photolab, and PureWall helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this video a like, subscribe, and hit the bell you're new. And remember, in art we trust.